Music Studios TV. Today we're going to have a piano lesson about how to create sound at the piano using body movements and body weight, how to use gravity to work with you and not against you, and how you can create loud sounds, powerful sounds in music and it not be harsh. Dorothy Taubman, famous piano technique pedagogue from Brooklyn, New York, has said, every part of your body must work for you, otherwise it works against you. So we're going to have a discussion now about the different body parts and fulcrums of the body that we're playing from so that you can get the sound that you want. The key is longer than it looks and when you press it there's a hammer at the end of it that's hitting the string. If you press it very slowly you feel some resistance and I call that the bump. You don't want to get hung on the bump, you want to go past the bump so it'll make a sound. Now let's talk about how we use our body movements to create this sound. Shake your arm out, lift it up, and let go. And if it stays up there, you're holding your tension, you're holding tension or energy in your shoulders. And now for you to get a strong sound, you're going to have to bang. And that's not good because you're going to get like a rebound effect from the piano. Like if you were to drop, if you were to jump off of some stairs with straight legs, you probably get some sort of an injury. So it's the same thing with our fingers and our arms. Now what we're aiming for is when you lift up your arm, and you might need to sort of coax it into like if you had a little baby and you're you're swinging it back and forth. Okay, now it's not a baby anymore because now we're going to drop it and there should be heavy arm weight and that's the weight that you want to play the piano with because the gravity is just uh, bringing you to the piano and you're working with your body and not against it. Energy can never be created or destroyed and we want to capture this energy in like a circle to make a sound as we play the piano. And if you can imagine if there's energy coming up through the floor, up through your feet, if they're resting on the floor, up through the pedals, if your feet are on the pedals, up through your legs, your hips, your arms, back into the piano, and down to the floor, and continually circulating. A Greek mathematician once said, give me a fulcrum and a lever long enough, and I can move the world. So. We want to work with these fulcrums, with the pivot points, with the levers that we have for our body to create the sounds that we want on the piano. So let's talk about what we have to work with. Power comes from the hips. So this is a strong muscle that we work from. So let's say I wanted to play a really loud chord. Well, you could actually throw yourself into the piano, use all of your body weight. Effortlessly, you're getting a nice strong chord. You usually would do that like at the end of the piece or if there's a big sforzando chord. Now, the next pivot point would be your shoulders. And if you move from your shoulder and go as fast as you can, you'll see you can't go very fast from the shoulders. So this would also be some, for some chords. But it wouldn't be quite as loud or powerful. And then we have the elbow. Here's another pivot point or fulcrum. Now you can go a little bit faster. So let's say you had some, some fast staccatos or something, but you wanted them loud in their big chords. I would use that fulcrum. And you have another one. This would be your wrist. Now you can go faster with your wrist. So this would be more like you know, a faster movement. Or let's say we have sixths. So that would be a wrist movement. And then if you go to the fulcrum of your knuckles, this is a very fast movement. So this would be for finger work, or if it was staccato. Then there's a, an even faster movement, and this involves something called rotation. And if you were to like shake a tambourine, that's rotation. So that's the fastest movement we can make. So if you can combine rotation with finger movements and these other fulcrum points, you've got coordinate movement. 
you never want to isolate a finger. You never want to play with just one finger and have the other fingers pulled back. And the reason for this is because we have two kinds of muscles in our hands. We have the ones that lift them up, and that would be the extensors, and then we have the ones that push them down, and that would be the flexors. And if you're playing with one finger and pulling the other ones back, in this case it's very dangerous because you see I have an extensor muscle extending this finger up and then I have the flexors in the same hand pulling these down. And if I'm doing this often on the piano, I can create a tear, I can create an injury in my hand. So you keep all of your fingers together like it's a soccer team and none of the other players run off the field. They're all together, they're a team, all working together. I'd like to talk about the pinky, the finger number five. A lot of people feel like since that's such a small finger that we're not going to get much sound out of that finger, that it's weak. But actually, if you think about it, if you were to do a karate chop and break a brick, I've never done that, but uh, you would use the side of the hand that the pinky's on, the finger number five. So actually, this has got to be pretty strong. So. If you use rotation, you can get a nice sound just by rotating towards that. You're using your whole arm weight, and there's gravity again working for you. And let's talk about the fourth finger. Robert Schumann injured himself so severely that he wasn't able to continue his career as a concert pianist. At least this is what I was told, was that he created a contraption that, like a pulley and a string and it would pull up his fourth finger because he wanted to make it just as strong as the other ones. But what he didn't know is that there is a tendon that goes over from the third finger, it goes right over the fourth finger and it prevents it from going up. And you can check this out yourself. If you put your hand flat on a table or the piano, you can lift up your one, you can lift up your two, your three, your five, but if it's flat and you try to lift up the fourth finger, it's, it's really not going to cooperate. But that's okay because if you use the other fingers to move with the fourth finger, you're going to get a sound and you're not going to injure yourself. And then as you learn these movements, they're going to be much smaller movements and almost imperceptible to the eye. To conclude, there must be harmony amongst all the body parts or injuries can occur. This short video only scratches the surface of developing technique at the piano with a balance of artistry and coordinate movement. This is something we all need to be constantly aware of and continue to explore. Happy practicing!